Hi, welcome to Ethereal Mechanics, video number 19. This is a history lesson in the luminiferous ether, a ether, that's the old way, as opposed to the way I have adopted for the new ether, which is ether, to distinguish the two different models. And we're going to explain how the Michelson-Morley experiment could have missed the ether. Oh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, that's in the next video. We're going to just explain how the Michelson-Morley Michelson -Morley experiment worked. This is generally just a history lesson. We're not going to release anything new here. So if you already know everything about the luminiferous ether, you can skip this. Okay, we're going to have a brief discussion of the ether along with the logic behind it, and then we're going to discuss the Michelson-Morley experiment. I just said that in the previous video. The ether. Scientists noted that light has similar property to other known wave phenomena, like water waves. Water waves travel over water. String waves travel over a string. Sound waves travel through the air. They have a medium, a medium that allows them to, this, the waves to be conveyed. Because without water, you can't have water waves. Without air, you can't have air waves. And so they realize that air, light must have a medium that carries light because it behaves just like all these other wave phenomena. And so they said, well, gee, what's the medium for light? Is it air? Well, they pumped all the air out of a a little cylinder like this and found light still went through it. So it must be something other than air. It must be something that fills empty space. And what they named this stuff, um, they dubbed it the luminiferous ether, which means something very, very fine and gaseous. I guess that's the definition of that. And luminiferous that has to do with light, like luminous. So the luminiferous ether, the ether that carries the light. And you can go to Wikipedia if you want to learn more about that. So they made some assumptions, and these are critical assumptions. They made the assumption that it must be stationary with respect to the universe. And from one, as the sun and the earth move through the universe, they must move through the ether as well. So if the above were true, then it should be, we should be able to measure the speed of the earth relative to the ether. Okay, so they developed the Michelson-Morley experiment. And the basic concept is follows. This is not the same as what they use, but it's the same idea. You can think of if we want to measure the speed of a boat to water waves. Well, on the back side of the boat, you put a little dipper in the water that keeps disturbing the water at a constant rate. At the front of the boat, you have a little thing that detects when the, light, when the, uh, the water waves travel and finally reach that point. And then you can measure the time it takes. And time divided by distance, or sorry, distance uh, divided by time is equal to velocity. And then you can figure out what the velocity of the waves are. Okay, but then if the boat is in motion, okay, then when as you make some disturbance and then the boat moves off, the leading indicator here, the leading detector is going to be moving ahead of the wave. So it's going to take longer until the wave actually strikes the front detector. So you can determine your velocity using what's called the Doppler effect to figure out what your velocity of the boat is relative to the water. Okay, now the, pr the problem here is we use light to see the water waves. The problem is how do you see light waves? So because we can't observe light propagation the way water, we can water waves, we have to use a very specialized equipment. This equipment used for the Michelson-Morley is an interferometer. I'm not going to get into how an interferometer works. That's a whole other video. But you can go to Wikipedia um, and, and look at it there. So what was the result of the Michelson? Nothing. The interferometer could not detect any difference in the velocity of light regardless of what was tried. So scientists tried to save the, the ether theory. They came up with this ether drag theory, assuming that as the earth moves through space, it drags the ether with it. So no longer does the earth move through the ether. The, ether is dragging the, er the earth is dragging the ether now. Well, that would explain the Michelson-Morley experiment, but then it, it becomes inconsistent with an item called stellar aberration. We're going to get into that in a whole video by itself. Um, so there's many desperate attempts to save the ether. Finally, the Lorentz, Lorentz transformation saved the ether <laughs> by killing it, by basically saying that things must contract along their length as they move, which means that no matter what you do, you can't measure the ether. Okay, and then because of that, ether was forgotten and relegated to crackpots like me. So what's the new ether model? By replying re reciprocal thinking, which starts in the next video, a new model for the ether is developed. This model satisfies all known observations. I'm going to go over all these. I don't have video numbers for these guys yet. Some of these are, once you, 
once you uh, dismiss one, it actually dismisses the other, I think, but we'll get into that later. So what's next? Number 20, we're going to start the new Ether model with reciprocal thinking. You do not want to miss video number 21. Uh, we're going to complete the ether drag. Uh, there is ether drag, but it's not the ether drag uh, that they discuss because the ether drag they discuss is ridiculous. And then we're going to go into Distinti's universe here. Uh, thank you for donating. I appreciate it. And have a nice day.